Well, good morning. good morning. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad therein. Amen. Nice to see the sun shining. I left this morning. It was so foggy, I could hardly see the road. And had fog all the way to McIntosh. And then all of a sudden it started clearing up. But uh, praise the Lord. <clears throat> I want to start out this morning with a song of praise. We have a lot to praise the Lord for, don't we? Nathan called me last night, yesterday afternoon. The baby's here. He was so excited. Oh, I'll tell you. He said, she is the most beautiful little baby I ever saw. <laughs> that sounds like a proud daddy, doesn't it? All right. All right, blessed be the name. All praise to He who reigns above, the majesty supreme, who gave His Son for man to die, that He might man redeem. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above His name shall stand, exalted more and more. And God the Father's own right hand, where angel holds the door. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Redeemer, save. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be the Counselor, the Mighty Prince of Peace, of all this kingdom conquer, whose reign. Shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, amen. Blessed be the name. Of the Lord, praise God. We want to go to prayer this morning. We have a special request today. Yep, the Jago family. The Jago family, they lost their house yesterday. And uh, praise the Lord, they, were, they weren't in at the time, so they're all safe. But terribly devastated. And you know, when I was growing up back, we'd hear, it seemed like every year Christmas time, a house would burn. And, uh, you know, it was just, back in those days, of course, Christmas trees were all, all live trees. There was no artificial trees. And, uh, and the Christmas lights were hot. I mean, you could touch them and you'd burn your fingers. Some of them had candles. Yes, my mom and dad, in fact, I think still hanging around the house someplace is the candle set that went on the tree. Can you imagine? Dad said we kept a bucket of water next to the tree, just in case. And uh, there was also a set of lights 
that hooked up to a six volt car battery. And uh, there weren't very many lights, but when they got those, they thought they were really living. But you know, still, no matter when it is, when a house burns down, I'll tell you, it's tough. Years ago, not too long after Los and I were married, we were driving back close to Red Lake Falls. And looked over to the right away from the highway and we saw smoke. Drove over there to see what was wrong and here we saw a house on fire. Kids were running outside, no coats or anything on and their house was on fire. The parents were gone. They were still using the old wood stove, wood uh, cook stove. And the reason the parents were gone is that they'd gone to town to see if they could find an electric cook stove. But they were a little bit too late. And their house was gone. And we were there when we saw the parents driving in the yard. Pretty tough. Anyone else who need prayer for today? Pearl and Bob. What's that? Pearl and Bob. Earl and Bob. Okay. David and Brenda. David and Brenda. Yeah, Brenda's still in the hospital. Been a tough road. Been a real tough road. Hoping to get out tomorrow, but not sure. So. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the power of prayer. And Lord, our hearts go out to the, to the Ziggle family. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you would wrap your arms of love around them. And Lord, that they will find in you the comfort and peace they need. And God, we just pray that you would provide for them as a family. And Lord, we know the children ask a lot of questions of why. And God, we pray that you would just work in a mighty way. Just draw the community together. Lord, that there can be a healing and restoration. Father, we pray too for for uh, uh, these who are pray for Bob that you would just touch him. And Lord, we pray for um, for David, Brenda, as they're struggling. We pray, of God, that you would just bring healing to Brenda. Lord, she's been having quite a hard time. Be her healer. And Pearl too. Father, we just pray that you would that you would bring healing to her. Lord, you know it's true. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can do all things. Thank you, Lord, for a healthy baby that you brought yesterday to Nathan and Shara. Lord, just put your blessing on that little one. And we pray, Lord, for Jeremy and Anna, they're on their way home right now. We pray keep them safe as well. And Lord, we pray now that you would just bless our service. And may Jesus be glorified. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. The scripture this morning is found in Hebrews chapter six, chapter 11, I should say. And it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, 
by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, but was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this, this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. That last verse is one I want you to hang on to because we'll be getting into that in the message this morning. Amen. From the rising of the sun, it's good to see the sun. Just going down to the sea. From the rising of the sun, cheer the going down to the The name of the Lord is to be praised. From the rising of the sun, cheer the going down to the sea. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea. Is to be praised. Oh, yes, praise the Lord. Come and worship, royal priesthood. Come and praise Him, holy nation. Worship. Jesus, our Redeemer, He is precious, King of glory. Let's sing it one more time. Come and worship, royal priesthood, come and praise Him. Our Redeemer, He is precious, King of glory. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, we don't want just a little bit of the Spirit of God. But we want that Spirit of God to flow through our soul and just engulf this place. And you know, in heaven, that's the sweet Spirit of the Lord is everywhere. It's like the air in which we breathe. You can't put your finger on it and say, there it is. There's the presence of the Lord. It's all around, continually. You, you sense, you don't go in and out, but the presence of God, the sweet holiness, is all around. Oh, we can have that now. Sweep over my soul, sweep over my soul, Sweet Spirit, sweep over my soul. My rest is complete while I sit at thy feet. Sweet Spirit, sweep over my soul. Let's sing it again, shall we please? 
Sweep over my soul, sweep over my soul, sweet spirit, sweep over my soul. My rest is complete while I sing a happy feet. Sweet spirit, sweep over my soul. Oh, Lord Jesus, just cause your spirit to sweep over us this morning. Fill your house, Lord, with your presence. And Lord, may we be so aware of the nearness of God that we will pour out our hearts to you and just let you sweep over us, touching every area of our heart and of our lives. Bring forth a mighty cleansing, Lord of your spirit. We'll give you the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you can fill this house of praise with your spirit. And in those homes of those who are watching us today, you can just fill those homes as well Lord, his hearts are just crying out, Oh, Lord, I need more of you. I need more of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for doing it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The announcement's coming up for this week. We, uh, again, our telecast goes out on Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, and then Bible study at Sharon's at 6.30 Wednesday night. And then next next Sunday, again, our worship at, or our Sunday school at 9.30 and worship at 11. Anything else that we need to bring up? We will be, be, we'll have to discuss after church when we're going to do the annual meeting, and so uh, we'll have to get that scheduled here real, real soon. So we should do that today. Amen. Well, this is the, the first Christmas song I wrote. And if you remember it, you can sing with us or sing with me. But you know, now that Thanksgiving is past and we're starting into the Christmas season, I've already had you know, on Friday was Black Black Friday. I don't know why they call it black. You're black and blue, maybe. But black and blue <laughs> fighting for things. All the stores moved from the red into the black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And everybody else is in the red. But anyway. We have heard the sweet story of Christmas How the Savior came down to earth But do we realize the message of our dear Savior's birth How the angels appear to the shepherds singing glory to God in the highest as they told of a baby in a nature of Christ Jesus the King of all peace we have heard the sweet story of Christmas how the wise men came from afar they traveled 
with great expectation as they follow the shining star. How the angels appeared to the shepherds singing glory to God in the highest as the truth of a baby Jesus, the King of all kings. We have heard the sweet story of Christmas, but what does it mean to your soul? Do you know Christ was born for a reason? Glory to God to redeem your poor soul. And the angels appear to the shepherds, singing glory to God in the highest. As they talk of a baby in a manger, the King of all Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the power of your word. And Lord, we ask that you would be our teacher today. You would show us those things which we need to know, we need to hear. And Lord, that you would challenge us today to walk in faith, believing. But we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take you into the book of Luke this morning as we, today is kind of the gateway to Christmas. We have just been celebrating Thanksgiving and um, what I did in my house is when I, I was invited out for Thanksgiving dinner and had a, had a great time. And uh, <clears throat> came home again and went to work in decorating my house for Christmas. Lois always loved it when I started decorating the house and so I uh, went to work at it and things all came together. And it's, you know, in the midst of things that we don't understand, it's so good to know the greatest reality of all is Jesus Christ. And I'm afraid today that for so many people, when they think about Christmas, all they think about is Santa Claus. They think about celebrations of getting together with family, which, all the, you know, that's good. They think of the lights and all these things. But the real meaning of, of Christmas is Christ. And, um, and so I went to, when we got a stereo at home, Lois loved Christmas music, and, and uh, the stereo would just played all the time, it seemed like, and she always had Christmas music on. So when I got home from Thanksgiving dinner, I sat there, I turned to put Christmas music on the stereo and just let it play and then went to work 
in making the house look bright. Because our life is bright because of Jesus Christ. But to know the beginning of Christmas, to, to, to really get into this, we need to go back to the beginning. You know, Jesus was not all of a sudden born, just all of a sudden. Uh, and, you know, there had to be the nine months of pregnancy. But there was also the preparations. How many times have you prayed and prayed and prayed and it seemed like the answer was never going to get there? You had to wait, you had to wait, and you had to wait. And, um, and other people, they just seem like they pray and pop, there's the answer. We like, wouldn't that be nice? But you know in the Christmas story, there had to be preparations. There was a lot of things that had to be accomplished before Christmas could become a reality. Otherwise, people aren't going to believe anyway. But we, uh, sometimes God has to prepare the hearts of the people that are, in deep, are most deeply involved. If God wants to use you to do some mighty thing to reach other people, it is necessary that first he prepares you so that you can accept what God wants to do. As an example of this, I want to take you into Luke chapter 1. And beginning with the fifth verse, it says, Now there was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And I, I like this next verse. It says that they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And you know, you look at a person like that, and you say, boy, they, are, they were righteous, they walked before God in purity and holiness. Their life must have been just sweet all the way through. It must have been wonderful because they're walking with God. But you know, no matter how close you walk with God, there are times you don't understand what is happening. The other day I was, in fact, on Thursday, Dave and I both went to the hospital to see Brenda. And you know it's hard to be in a hospital when, when your whole family is feasting around the table. You want to be there when you've been in the very center of it all the time, preparing the meals, and all of a sudden here you are eating hospital food. <clears throat> oh wow. Exciting. You feel so thankful. <laughs> you want to be able to hop out of that bed and you can't. But I, like I, I told David Brenda, there that night. I said there's things going on you do not see with your eyes. God is doing something that you are not able to see right now, but the day will come you will thank God. Because you are here going through this trial for a purpose. It may not be fun. But eventually there's going to be joy when you see what God has done. Our lives here in this world are for a short period of time. And then we're going to be gone. And when we stand before our God, and all of a sudden we begin to see what God was doing behind the scenes that we did not see here, we're going to stand back and say, wow, all that was happening? Well, I was complaining. <laughs> you were doing all that and, and, and I didn't see it. 
But thank you, God, for the honor and the privilege of being used even when I didn't know it was happening. That's a hard thing to grasp. But he goes on. Here this couple that were that were righteous, blameless before God. It says in verse 7, they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they were both now well stricken in years. Don't you love that term? Well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And you know, the burning of incense is like prayer. And it was a symbol of prayer. When they burned the incense, of course, the, 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 the smell of the incense went up. And as the smell was going up, the people were visualizing this. The prayers were going up. And uh, when the Lord gave me the dream of heaven years ago, I could smell this beautiful fragrance. I mean, it was just unlike anything that we could ever smell here. And I said, what is that wonderful fragrance? And the Lord said, that is how the Lord sees your prayers. It's a sweet fragrance that he's, when we pray, it means so much to him. He just goes, oh, I love that. You know, God loves it when you pray. This morning, Nathan called me, and I heard a tiny little voice. It was the voice of their newborn baby. You know what? To this old grandpa, I'll tell you, that was a beautiful sound. The sound of a newborn baby. And everything inside of me says, I want to hold her. I want to hold her. And Nathan said, Dad, she's just waiting for Grandpa's arms to pick her up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But think when you talk to God, His love for you is far greater than anything we can experience here. And when you speak to Him, the sound of your voice is like a sweet fragrance floating up to Him. And He said, Oh, I love it. And the Lord said to me, All through eternity, you will be able to smell that sweet fragrance. And it'll be so wonderful simply knowing how much the Lord loved hearing your voice when you pray. You know, that should change our prayer life. Because so many times it's kind of like a Oh, I suppose I better pray. But God loves to hear you. And He hears you the moment you pray. But it doesn't mean that you're going to see the results immediately. But He was in there offering incense and says, And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. So they were praying outside and they can smell the, the, the fragrance of the incense and they know that it, it's, a, it's a visual. It's a visual for them as they can smell the incense that's just burning. And, uh, and they're saying, oh, God's hearing. God's hearing. We're praying. God's hearing. And here all the time, this is being done. The one who is blameless, 
the one who has lived for God and is pleasing to the Lord is the one offering the incense and it's his prayers that are not seemingly being heard. And I'll tell you a little secret. There are times when this preacher has a hard time preaching. You know why? Because I am going through a struggle at the time. And the old devil is saying, why, how can you preach to those people? How can you lead them in faith when you are struggling yourself? I know where that comes from. It comes from the devil. God is not saying to me, wait until all your prayers are answered before you tell you, I tell you to pray. God doesn't say that. Proclaim my word and trust me. And so here Zacharias is in there and he's, he's offering the prayers, the incense. And when Zacharias saw him, or it says, And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Wow. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel, the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Oh, wow. Your prayer is heard. When did Zacharias pray for a son. What do you think? How f most of most of us we would say, well, he prayed when they were young enough to have children. And when it says they were both well stricken in years, well now he now he comes back and he says, My wife is <laughs> Well, it's a good thing that his wife wasn't there when he said it. Or he would have been stricken again. Probably with a rolling pin. You call, you call me well stricken in years. Do you know we are never beyond the place where God can hear and answer. God heard the first time that Zacharias and Elizabeth prayed for a baby. God heard the first time, but for some reason they couldn't understand this. God sought all everything in order. He could see, he can see the beginning from the end at the same time. And he hears their prayer over here, but he's saying, but there's a reason why I can't bring that until over here because it's for Mary's sake that, that he's going to be born here. But not only that, a little further down the road, this baby is going to be the one baptizing in the River Jordan. And the people are going to be gathering around to baptize and hear this baby that's going to be born after him. Jesus is going to come and he is going to say concerning Jesus Christ, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. All things are in order and they will happen according to the best plan that God can lay out. And so it's not that God isn't hearing. God sets things in order that His glory can be revealed and His plan will be carried out. What would have happened? You see, if Elizabeth would have become pregnant when she was, say, 20 years old, probably nothing would have worked. 
Mary had to understand something when God was going to speak to her and tell her, you're going to have a baby, and the baby will not be through Joseph, it'll be through the Holy Spirit. Now that defies all imagination, doesn't it? And God's going to say to her, now look, I'm going to ask you, something impossible is going to happen, and you have to trust me for it. But now, see, God knows the human nature of Mary. And so he is going to confirm his power, his ability, because when Elizabeth now comes on the scene and here she is pregnant, in old age, she's an old lady, and Mary knows this has to be a miracle. Now, if God can do that, he can do this. Isn't God good? He does things to encourage us, but God steps beyond the natural into the miraculous. And all the plans of God fit together perfectly. You know, it's kind of like a big jigsaw puzzle. Get all these pieces. My mom used to do jigsaw puzzles. She'd have the card table out, and here's this big thing, and on it. And finally get down towards the end. And you find out when it's all done, there's one piece left. It fits perfect. And the puzzle is complete. There's a lot of things in our lives that don't make sense to us. But when we say, okay, Lord, we're saying, I believe that the last piece is going to fit. It's tough. It's hard. But he says to him, say, your prayer has been heard and your wife's going to have a baby. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Ah. Whoever heard of such a thing? And many of the children of Israel shall, be, shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall look before him in the Spirit, the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And now Zacharias, and he has answered, he said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in you. We are beyond the ability for this to happen. But the question is not, are we beyond our ability to do the things of God? Is that God has the ability to use whoever he wants. You know, Zacharias is an old man and he's still ministering. That gives me encouragement. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many people said to me, how many, when are you going to retire? I'm still upright. I'm doing what I love to do. I'm doing what God called me to do. May not do it as fast. But I'm still doing it. But if it had been today, Zacharias would have probably been the chaplain of a nursing home. <laughs> but not then. Not then. He was still involved in the very heart of the ministry of the temple. He was the one who brought the people to communicate with God. Oh, praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. But the angel said to him, or then uh, the angel said, answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee glad these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. I'm afraid here this man of God question how this could possibly be. You know, I can identify with that. I really can. I don't know how many times I've had to stand beside someone that was maybe crippled. Mine. And God says, pray. How can it happen? Mine. God in His mercy yeah. did not give me a swift kick and said, I'll get somebody else. But the sweet incense of prayer would go up and healing took place. God is still a miracle worker. And he is still trying to bring, bring life. Perhaps you look at the things that you've been praying for maybe for a long, long time. And God says, I heard you the first time. And I've begun the work. But it's time you start praising me. Because it may seem totally impossible to you, to your natural mind. It may be seem totally impossible, but with God all things are possible. Remember, he heard you the first time. But there comes a place where we have to switch our prayer life to praise and resting in Him. And I've told you the story about that lady that came to us years ago. And she said, would you pray for me? She said, my husband is an unbeliever. And he hates when I go to church. And he hates when I witness to her. She said, I go to church and I get all charged up. And I go home and I try to talk to him about the Lord. And he gets mad and he beats me up. And she said, he gets mad every time I go to church. And every time I come home from church, he beats me up. She says, when I get home tonight, she's, he's going to beat me up again. Will you pray for me? And I said to her, ma'am, it's time you quit preaching to your husband. You've told him how to be saved. When you get home from church, have a smile on your face. A smile that is based in faith. You have asked for your husband's salvation. It is time you begin thanking God for saving his soul even though you haven't seen it yet. And, and, I, and I said, and when your husband looks at you smiling, he's going to say, what are you smiling for? And just tell him, I'm just smiling because I'm so happy for what God's going to do in your life. I'm so happy. We came back a year later. And the same lady was there. She's just smiling. Oh, now that cloud is off her face, off her head. And she's just smiling so big. And I, she said, do you remember me? I said, oh, yes, I remember you. And she said, do you remember what you told me last time? You told me that I should be rejoicing in my husband's salvation. I should be rejoicing because of what God's doing in him. I, I said, yeah. She said, you know what happened? 
That night I went home from church. I had a smile on my face. She said, I was actually excited because I believed God had heard my prayer and he was going to save my husband. I walked in the house and I was happy. I was smiling. And he said, what are you smiling about? And I said, what you told me to. I'm smiling because God said that he is going to come in your heart. And, and, uh, and she said, do you know what's happened since then? He's just happy to be at the altar. He said, do you know what happened since then? I said, no. Every Sunday he's saying, are you going to church today? Oh, yeah. And he's telling me to go to church and he's excited because he likes when he saw the change in me. He likes a wife that is happy in one, instead of one that's griping and complaining because... It wasn't walking with God. It was some time later, years, I got an envelope in the mail. I opened it up. And here it was on obituary. The woman had passed away. And her husband had written in this letter, my wife is in heaven today. And in the obituary, it said, we want all memorial gifts to be given to the Glory Land Gospel team in memory of my wife. Hey. What a change had come over him. But it was because she put faith to her prayers and began to rejoice that God heard her the first time. And you know, faith is the anchor of the soul. In the midst of the heartaches and trials, faith, like, like a song says, prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. And that day, Zacharias says he, he could not speak. He could just motion with his hands. But his wife did get pregnant. She was carrying that baby when Mary came to her door. And then they could both say, wow, God knew what he was doing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning you know exactly what you are doing. We look back over all these many years at this story and the story of the birth of Christ and all that took place through those years gone by, all the way to this day when we have an eternal hope because of those who said yes when you asked them to do the impossible. Lord, give us the faith to say yes when we don't understand. But we say yes to you and put as our anchor our faith in your promises. But we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to do a closing hymn this morning. You know, it's our temptation to to struggle and to really we lose our, our, our peace inside because we can't understand. <laughs> but what we need to do is rest in the Word of God.
his soul in sad exile was out on my sea so burdened with sin and distress till I heard a sweet voice say make me your choice and I entered a haven of rest I anchored my soul in the haven of rest I'll sail the wild seas no more. The tempest may sweep over the wild stormy deep. In Jesus, I'm safe evermore. I yielded myself to his tender embrace and faith taking hold of the word my fetters fell on and I anchored my soul the haven of rest is my Lord I've in the haven of rest, I'll sing the wild seas no more. The tempest may sweep o'er the wild stormy deep. In Jesus, I'm safe evermore.
He knows the cry of our heart. And only He can make it happen. Father, we thank You. There is nothing impossible, Lord, to You. And God, we just pray in Jesus' name that You would just work Your miracle in Your time to give us the ability to rest in Your promises, in Your Word, and in Your love. And Lord, may we go today in the joy of knowing we have talked with you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.